Hello and welcome to Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne and I'll be your host on this show, talking to landscape photographers about their motivations, likes and dislikes. This week I'm talking to Graham Gordon. He is a multi-award winning photographer specialising in long exposure landscape photography, architecture and seascapes. His passion is driven by his desire to prove himself and is very much about the artistic aesthetic rather than necessarily staying true to the scene he is shooting. His fine art architectural black and white images show a clear vision of the architectural subject in isolation from the rest of the environment in which it sits. We discuss how his desire to win awards with his images has fueled his passion, where he likes to shoot most, and what it sometimes takes to get the shot along with lots more. I hope you enjoy the show. G'day, Graham. Welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Going well, Graham. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for coming. I've uh, been uh, a follower of yours for, for some time, and I know that you and I have corresponded a couple of times before. Why don't we start with what got you into photography right at the very beginning? What's your earliest photography memory? It's a funny one. I grew up in New Zealand, and... I don't actually remember my family having a, a camera. And wow, okay. I gave my mum a call the other day and I said, did we have a camera, mum? And she said, no, we never had a camera. And wow. uh, it's a funny thing. And But I know there was photos. So obviously the relatives took photos and, and yeah, yeah. my parents. And it's a funny thing. I never really even remember hearing music growing up. And that was mainly because the fact my dad was a mad punter and all I really ever heard was the scratchings and the track condition, <laughs> which was totally classic. But yeah, so I think that the first time I ever, I, I had some interest in it. I don't know what it was. And when I first came to Australia, I bought a camera then. Okay. And I used it infrequently, mainly just to record things that were going on with our friends, parties and that sort of thing, but not really any landscape type of photography there was no real passion there at all yeah yeah that it didn't start to, for me until i went over to the states and joined right. friends over there and once again same thing just we i had a couple of really nice cars and would take photos of the cars and friends but it wasn't until landscape is when we decided to go down to mexico and go on a, a road trip that was the very first time i probably ever started to take some landscape type photos it was yeah. something different okay and what was it when you first started was it just recording the journey and places you'd seen and yeah essentially that's it you can imagine going down to mexico i'd never seen one of those huge cactuses before yeah that's yeah kind of really interesting and and the mayan ruins down the mayan archaeological sites yeah mexico yeah. guatemala they're everywhere when i say everywhere down in southern southern mexico central mexico there there's quite a few and Mm. Yeah, really interesting to look at the pyramids they have over there a lot of people don't realize they have pyramids yeah they're they're actually more impressive for me than the, even the pyramids in egypt wow okay um, if you said to me you want to go shoot some pyramids i'd go i'm going to central america i'm going to oh. south america i'm not going to egypt it's they're that, that great i reckon <laughs> yeah so when did it start to become something that you wanted to turn into art um I pretty much, as I said, never really totally got into photography. And then, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago, I decided to buy another camera, a decent camera. And I thought, I really like to learn how to use this because it, before it was always on automatic. Yep. And for some reason, I just decided, hey, this would be great to learn how to actually use this thing, the dials and buttons and whatever. So, yeah, I bought one with dials and buttons. I might as well work out what they're yeah, for. exactly. <laughs> so about the same time, there was an article in the local paper about a group, uh, local group focused photography yep. that, um, that somebody, had, um, a guy, John Armitage, had, had started up. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And But I didn't do anything about it. And then I go out to, I'm looking on, on the net, whatever I can do to work out how to use this thing. Then I go do a shoot, a uh, sunset shoot, one day, and I ran into John Armitage, unbelievably. Wow, okay. And I then just joined the group and things progressed from there. Pretty much just doing regular landscape stuff, probably a couple of years before I even got anywhere near Photoshop. Okay, um, yep. Just never had any much of an idea. I just a bit of Lightroom. 
And then one day, and they had some, they were doing their awards and I put some photos in and didn't do particularly well. And then there was the P yep. uh, Australian uh, for Professional Photography Awards and mm-hmm. they were doing it down in Sydney and they were displaying the photos and doing the judging. So I, I go in there and I have, this is the first time I can honestly say I've seen kind of fine art prints, photos pr- printed on really nice paper. Yep. And I went, wow, wow, this is really amazing. And the photography awards were coming up later that year. And I looked at these and I thought, whatever I'm doing, it's not good enough. Okay. I've got to get creative. I don't never consider myself to be an artist. I can't draw. Yeah. Um, I can't sketch, whatever. But I thought I've got to do something because what I'm doing is clearly not good enough. And that mm. was probably the beginning of when I started to really get artistic. Okay. Tried to get artistic. And that was the beginning of the journey, really. Yeah. Okay. And so that motivation, to, was it about trying to win competitions or was it just about to the improvement of your own sort of creativity? Um, it would be to win competitions. I'm extremely um, competitive. Okay. Like really competitive. So that was a, what it was about for me because, yeah, at that stage, yeah, that's pretty much it for me, really. Yeah. <laughs> I want to win. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair yeah, yeah, essentially from there on, I started to make progress. And I that next photography awards, so I, I probably finished second and third and in some categories, which was a big step up for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that really what's continued to be your motivation or have things changed now? I think it's still a motivation for me, absolutely. But at the same time, what I've discovered about photography and which I've discovered about myself is I would really like the the creative outlet. Mm. It's something in me that I didn't know I had. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I can't sketch, I can't draw, I can't anything. But I do love that creativity that I can spend hours upon hours in front of the computer editing and creating. And I really enjoy that and I find it very relaxing. That's one aspect that for me, and of course, I like to play the wins. I try hard and I've spent a lot of time trying to get there. Yeah, fair enough. Do you think it's important to set creative challenges for yourself? And if so, how do you go about doing that? No, I don't really set myself any challenges. My only challenge that I have for myself is to try and continually get better. I'm not a perfectionist. But I'm working toward per- perfection. I okay. get weird about it, but I am. I move in that direction as best I can. So that's the motivation for me. Yeah. And are you a planner when it comes to creating your shots, or are you one that does things more spontaneously? So you you see something and you grab it and off you go, or is it more okay a more considered approach? I'm going to go out at this time of day, this place. I know where the sun will be or the sky or the whatever it is that you're out to capture. Which way, which end of that spectrum are you on? Are you a, oh, I'm a total planner. Yeah. A total okay. planner. Yeah, there's nothing by chance. The only chance would be if I was somewhere and I spotted a building that or something that I wanted to shoot and I would, that's opportunity. And sometimes when I'm out and about and I'm, I'll see something and I lock it in and I go, okay, because I generally don't like to shoot during the day. Yeah. It's an overcast day because I don't want any harsh shadows and light on anything. Yeah. I'm shooting. Yeah. I like to be able to create that myself. So okay. yeah, I'll, I'll, like, for instance, if I want to go into the city and shoot a building, I will get in there before sunrise. Yep. First light, it's light enough to shoot. There's no real direct light on it, and I'll shoot that. And that, that's pretty much a process that I, I would use. Because once the sun hits it, so off. apart from that, I go out on a cloudy day. That's the only other thing is I'll wait for a cloudy day and I'll go on a cloudy day. Yeah, yeah right, right. So from where you were to where you are now, how would you describe that journey in terms of your, your style and how that has been shaped through your experiences since since you started to, to where you are? Um, it's one of those things, isn't it, that you don't think you have a particular style. I don't, 
look, I know I do that fine art, whatever, if you want to be, you called it black and white architectural stuff. That is a style. Yep. But I don't, yeah, when I, that all came about, I'll tell you a little story about how that all came about. You probably know sure, sure. how that actually happens. We were thinking about going for a holiday one day and we just wanted a short break. And I said to my wife, what about New York? I'd love to go to New York. And she goes, oh, it's too cold. This is like January, February. <laughs> Snow, you wouldn't like it. Of course, as a photographer, you're going to love it, right? Yeah. But anyway, and so that didn't work out. So we thought, oh, okay. I said, okay, so I had a somebody I was following online and I knew they were in Dubai. And I thought, hold it. Why don't we go to Dubai? So we went to the, I contacted this guy. Sergeant, and I said, Hey, mate, I'm coming over. Do you want to get together for a sunrise shoot? And he goes, Yeah, sure. So great. So we did that, and he's a really good guy. And and while we we're doing the shoot, I said, would you, would you teach me what you're doing? Because he was doing this fine art black and white stuff. Yeah, yeah. He said, Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'll do you, I'll do you a, a session. We sat down together for three or four hours and he took me through what he does. Yeah, and and the rest is history, so to speak. I basically learned that basics at that stage. I, I've developed what I do over time. I'm always learning. I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's pretty much how it got going, and that's the style I'm doing. But same, it's saying that at the same time, I'd like to try and do more mi- minimalistic type of thing. Yeah, so I think that's where it's at. So just a little bit going forward. Yep. So if anything, if I'm moving forward, that's probably what an area I want to move forward on, but mm. it helps to have the subjects. So that's, yeah, absolutely. A, bit of a, that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I imagine it's a bit of a challenge in cityscapes in particular, trying to pick out individual buildings where you might have a, a lot of taller buildings around it, for example, or buildings that if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, then you get shadows across it that are coming from other buildings, etc. How yeah. do you work around some of those issues? You can essentially darken down those buildings you can darken down those areas essentially is what you do so they're less prominent with my editing i like to keep detail in the shadows yep i notice with a lot of guys that do my kind of thing they their blacks are quite black and it it looks quite good it's contrasty so it looks quite good but i actually like to keep that detail as much yeah, as right. possible in the so I'd darken it down to the point that the surrounding buildings as much as possible. But if there is residual light hitting would be residual light hitting those buildings, then I'll give them a bit of light as well. But essentially you, your main eye is going to go to the main subject. Okay. I guess one of the things that comes from that is the change from what somebody might see with the naked eye to what your interpreting into your images how do you make that decision to change what people change that perception change what people are seeing yeah i'm not too um, worried about reality i'm creating art there's never anything that i want to necessarily maintain it's not a snapshot it's not a it's art i'm creating not a journalistic record yeah yeah, if i have to remove a building or whatever i'll just do it because i don't want it in the shot yeah for instance i don't know if you're familiar with the last shot i black and white shot i put up where it was a museum building in dubai yeah there was trees in the background now i have edited that shot with and left the trees in and it's like the one behind me, I guess that's the one we're talking about here. Sure, so sure. It does have trees in behind. But yep. on this occasion, trees can be tricky to edit around. Like you've got to, yeah, they're tricky. They can be tricky. So I decided. Yeah, you end up with halos and all sorts of yeah, weird artifacts it, if you're not it, careful. Yeah. yeah, you've got to be, it takes a bit of a lot of work to really, because I, I zoom in 100, 200, 300% when I'm yep. fixing the image. To make sure it's okay, because I know that's what a judge is going to do. They're going to zoom in 100%. I sure, sure will. So I just decided on, on that occasion just to remove the trees and make it more minim- minimalistic. On this one, you can see behind me. Yeah, I, there's no, no reality necessarily in my shots apart from the main subject. Yeah, okay. In terms of that, what is it that you're trying to communicate then with your photography that if it is unrealistic, is it just focus on this element? And 
interpret it as you will or are you trying to communicate something a little bit deeper? No, I'm a technical sort of photographer where I'm not necessarily, I'm definitely not usually trying to invoke some motion in the shot, anything like that. Okay. Um, it's something I would like to work on if there's something that I'd like to work on. What about yourself? Do you, when you shoot, do you, are you looking to have some emotion in your shots? Because I hear people talking about emotion in photography. Yeah, I, I guess for me, what I'm trying to express, uh, I don't know if it's um, an emotion. I guess it is in some ways, but what I'm trying to express in mine is the feeling of actually being there, seeing what I've seen. My gig is usually long exposure seascape sort of stuff. So, yeah, okay, that. You're not going to see the water the way that the camera's going to see it, but you're going to have a feeling that I was quite dark and a little bit eerie standing there an hour before the sun's actually risen. Yeah. But there's colour in the sky and there's movement in the water that's now completely and utterly blurred. So it, it's that feeling of being in somewhere that might feel a little bit dislocating, but... It, it's definitely that feeling of being there. When the sun's up and it's a quarter of a second flow shot or something, then it's about that feeling of the water rushing towards you and the excitement and the, the feeling, as I say, of, of actually being there, having your feet wet, feeling the sun on your face. Yeah, that's why I, I really particularly like cloudy, moody days because it it essentially delivers that right off the bat. You, It's moody, it's dark. It gives a feeling, right? Sure, so sure. It's easy. Whether that sort of thing comes across in my work, the skies are usually dark. I don't, I'm really not sure if that comes across. And yeah, I, anybody out there wants to give me a few tips on how I can <laughs> <laughs> improve that area I'm listening. Yeah, sure. In terms of where your style's going, do you see yourself continuing just to hone and improve this? Or are you thinking of branching out into, in, into changing styles up a little bit? I would like to think that I will progress and move forward as time goes on. It's all a bit of a journey for all of us, isn't it, really? Yeah, we're, definitely. Uh, we're all on our, our own little photography journey and we're always learning and I would hope that whatever I'm doing in, in a couple of two or three years' time is better than what I'm doing now. And mm. like I say, if I can somehow get that minimalistic thing going, that would be fantastic. But I enjoy all sorts of photography too. I, I get out there and mix it up a lot. So I, I yeah. just don't get too bored with what I'm doing. Hmm. I was in the city the other day doing a little bit of macro work and quite like that. And I like going out birding and yep. yeah, it's all good fun for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, what do you take away from some of the challenges that you have with things like birding and the patience that you got to have and waiting for the, the, the subject to do what you want it to do so you can get the shot you want versus those static buildings that aren't going to change other than the lighting on them are there any things that you bring in from one of those genres into the other not particularly uh, in fact i went up to Longreath the other day and there was just wasn't any action sometimes you go up there and it's there's sea eagles and offspray they're all over the place but there was nothing sure. going on and half an hour later i'm done i'm not that and i was thinking to myself <laughs> yeah as much as i love doing this and it's fun it's not 100% my bag. Yeah, yeah. It's something to do different that gets you out. Yeah. yeah. But where it, the only, I, where it comes in for me is that because I have a certain amount of skill in Photoshop, when it comes to editing those bird shots, I, it's, I find it quite enjoyable to, to do that because I have the skills to go to yeah, yeah. a lot of people. What's success look like for you in your photography? Success for me is, is a gradual improvement on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think I'm succeeding at that. Also, I, I like to win photography awards. I like to win. I don't go in as many as I might have done once upon a time. I'm a little bit picky now about what I go in because a lot of these uh, photography contests there, they seem to be skewed in, in favour of the organisers making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't put out much prize money. So if I'm going to pay... Thirty dollars to enter a, I want to see something at the other end of it. Yeah, sure, sure. um, but yeah, that's a good challenge, and I know you can't win them all, and I don't get disappointed or anything if I don't win because I don't win most of the time. 
Yeah. Um, but it's yeah, it's something I like to do. It's it's it feeds that competitive uh, nature I have. Yeah. Because if I wasn't doing that, I need to be out kicking footballs or doing yeah. something. I need to be doing something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about where photography? What place does it have in your life? Is it something that you want to take full time, or is it just a, a side hustle? Is it a, a hobby? What is it to you? Yeah, it's a hobby. It's a passion. It can be. You can take over your life to some degree. Sometimes mm-hmm. I spend a very a lot of time at it in my business. So I've I usually start at six in the morning, knock off about midday. So I can spend a lot of time editing photos, and that's probably yeah. an advantage I've had over a lot of people. I feel for people that don't get home till five thirty, six o'clock, dinner, the whole thing. You don't get much time. Where yeah. I've yeah. been lucky enough to have the time to work on that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, that's it. Really, just fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> What are the places that you keep calling you back, the ones that you just want to keep going back to? I don't do a lot of travelling. Uh, there's a lot of places I'd like to go. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I guess I've got to talk locally because I generally shoot the northern beaches. I yeah. don't as I, say, I don't do much travelling. With a small business, I don't. it's hard to get away. But if you said to me tomorrow, where do you go shoot somewhere? It'll depend on the weather conditions and the tide and the swell. But probably good old Tiramata. To me, Terramata is great. We'll get whatever, Terramata. But yeah, I, I love it because every time I go down there, it's different. You that's know? what I love too. It, it yeah. completely, constantly changes. And when I go to these places, so I go to Terramata, I don't have any great expectations. Uh, I've been there and I've shot it lots of times. And if I do happen to come across, to come away with something that I really like, it's that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds to me like where you live does influence how and what you shoot then. Oh, totally. It's a funny story, too, is when I started doing research, when I first got the camera and I started to work out how to use it, and I started to Google, where are good places to go? Mm -hmm. And because I didn't grow up in Sydney, although I'd lived here for a long time, and I'm living in Colorado, I live right on the beach, very lucky, and I'm Googling around and I come across this Terramata Beach, right? And I go, Terramata Beach, where's that? Because you know how it's not on the main road? Yeah, it's not, yeah. Super, it's not a super well-known beach. No, and that's another thing that I like about it. Occasionally yeah. you go down there and there's 20 or 30 photographers, but yeah. not many other people at sunrise. Yeah, so that was a funny thing. And as it turns out, I'm living five minutes away from one of the most iconic beaches in yeah. Sydney. But yeah. <laughs> what about places overseas? What's the furthest you've travelled to get a shot? To be honest, just the UAE in recent times. I've, I've been no. there three times yeah. in, in recent, in the last sort of five years. I haven't travelled any further than that. Been to New Zealand, see my mum, but I haven't really travelled much, unfortunately. Yeah. If I had the money and time, I'm off to Iceland or I'd love to do Antarctica, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I certainly love the landscape and it wouldn't have to be, it wouldn't be about necessarily about the buildings either. I just love the landscape. It mm. looks, these places look dramatic. Definitely. What's the most notable experience you've had while out shooting? Yeah, I've had a few notable kind of, I think one thing that place, things that really stands out in my mind one time is I was going to New Zealand and I wanted to shoot Myraki boulders. Have you been there? Yep. No, I've never. I, I've been to Auckland, I've been to Wellington, but I haven't been to the South Island at all. And yeah, I've been to. Been at the bottom of the Coromandel and been up to Bay of Islands, and that's basically it. Yeah. You know what Moraki boulders are? Yeah, I know where and what they are, yeah. Because I'm a bit of a planner, right, because I plan. So I I look at the tide and I go, I should go this week. I wasn't just going to shoot that. I was just going for it, but I just planned it. So I wanted to be there when it was mid-tide. If the tide's out, the water's not going to be impacting the boulders, and if the tide's too far in, you're not going to be able to get too close. Yep. So I planned it to to get there on the right tide. So I flew in like on whatever flight it was. I get in there, hire a car. I drive down that way. Don't get down that to about 11 o'clock at night. And I'd stayed in a Airbnb. And I get up in the morning and I'm all pumped up. I'm going, yeah, okay, this is there's going to be people all over the place. It's a popular spot. So I get up there and I get down there and yeah, it's probably 500, three or four, five, maybe 500 meters walk up the beach. And yep. I get there and it's still dark and I'm waiting for the sunrise. And eventually 
it starts to happen and it's starting to, and I'm going, oh, geez, this might be all right. And I'm looking down the beach and nobody's coming. And then it really starts to start to glow. It's really glowing. Wow. And I'm going, yeah, this is looking really good. And I look down the beach and there's nobody coming and I've got myself positioned and it actually exploded. It's one of the best, think of the best sunrise you've ever seen. That was that. Nice. And, and it's funny, I shot it and nobody ever showed up. And this is like one of those iconic places where yeah, absolutely. photographers yeah. would go to you. So that was fairly memorable for me. It was a the locals obviously weren't watching their weather apps. No. Yeah, that was one, one little story. And another one, I was in the South Island and I was going to, heading towards Milford Sound. And mm -hmm. I had seen a photo somebody put up of a lake up in the mountains. And I sussed it out. And it's a bit of a drive from town now, so it's not like I could get there too early. Yeah. So I get there and there's snow possibly forecast. And it's like about a two-hour hike up to this lake. And I get there and I walk about, oh, I go about 300 metres. And I went, oh, I don't have any water. And I go, oh, oh God, I can't be bothered going back. I'll just keep walking anyway. I haven't got any I've got like maybe a tiny bit of water. So I go start hiking up there and it's a pretty tough climb and I'm hiking, hiking and I'm sweating, sweating, sweating bullets. And then there's just there's water just just going across the path. Just and so eventually I'm getting so dry, I get down on my hands and knees, I'm and I'm sucking up that. It's a millimeter deep. It's really <laughs> sucking that water up. So I got enough to sustain gas. And so I got up to this lake and it's absolutely amazing. It's so peaceful. It's surrounded by these mountains and this snow covered and there's avalanches going off around little avalanches. And it's, it was just such a wonderful vista. And unfortunately, I got up there probably a bit too late. The light was starting to, the harsh light was starting to impact it. So I didn't really get any decent photo, but it was a very memorable little experience for me. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. Nice. The other crazy thing is like there was snow in the forecast and I didn't tell anybody where I was going. Big mistake. Really silly. Yeah. Uh, if I would broken a leg or something had happened, nobody in the world knew where I was. So it was a, a bit of a silly thing. You live and learn. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> what about horror stories? I think the horrors, not a lot of horror story, but I did have one occasion. I was going to shoot, to go to a shoot that was with the focus group and I obviously got my bearings crossed. And I obviously went to the wrong location and I started off down, it's down a track mm -hmm. and um, it was fairly steep and it was dark. And I got to a point where I was getting to the point where I wasn't going to be able to go down and I wasn't going to be able to go up. It, you ever been in that situation where yeah, it's, it's yeah. really sketchy? And I went, wow. And somehow I got myself out of it and I was clearly on the wrong, in the wrong place. And I went, wow, like easily a fall off the cliff. That was yeah, pretty yeah. sketchy. Yeah, I'm always a little bit careful now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I know that feeling. I, I was looking for an alternative to wading to get to Horsehead Rock down yeah. there in McGuey. And I don't know if you know the path. There's a path that takes you along the top of the cliff. And if you keep going, you end up at, out at the point in front of where the caravan park is. Yeah, yeah, I, and, I've, I've, yeah. I've never been there, but I know I, I've I've been there, but I haven't been to there. Yeah. yeah, and then there's this sort of sketchy, sandy cliff sort of thing that comes down to the beach where yeah. Horsehead is. Yeah, and I started down there, and it wasn't too bad because you could see a defined path. There was obvious track there. Yeah, and then it's petered out to this literal sandy cliff and i thought if i go down there i'm not going to be able to get back up and if yeah. i don't I, I stopped just before that point where it was like no return yeah and it's very tidal there isn't it you've got to yeah the, the, you've the, got to get there at the right time right yeah you've got to be there at the right time and i was looking to head down there just just because i, I did wait around there the day after uh, oh, so you went down from the other end and walked right Yeah, up. down from uh, yep. Camel Rock yes, and where think. you wade around yep. a couple of bays to, to yep. get to Horsehead. There's a couple of spots. You, if you climb up high enough, you can scramble over the rocks there, but it's a bit it's sketchy. It's like a drop in tide, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, going down that cliff, I got to that point where it was like, eh, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've spoken to other people and they told me it's, they tell me it's quite sketchy, quite dodgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I've bought myself a, a wet bag, though, since that trip, simply yeah. for the ability to be able to wade. If I, need, if I need to go into chest deep water, I want the camera and bag and whatever to stay dry. If I do anything like that again, I'll be keeping everything nice and dry in that bag. Yeah, I think the other thing is personal locator beacon. Wouldn't be a bad idea. If yeah, you're, if you're there on your own. Yeah. The, yeah. Actually, the time I waited around there, there was this old bloke there looked like he was living there on the beach. Oh, yes. Yeah. He didn't show any, when I left, because the tide was starting to come in again, Yeah, he didn't show any signs that he was on his way out. Yeah. It's interesting because I went I went and shot North Kirk Hill last week and it turned out a bit of a fizzer. I'm still trying to work out the right tide to get there so you can shoot the corner of that pool. Yeah. But you, you, I, I think I've decided you need a bit of a swell and you need a slightly higher tide and a bit of a swell yeah, um, to yeah. get the full effects. But anyway, I'm shooting it. And next thing, some guy comes out of nowhere and he'd clearly been obviously sleeping around the corner. And I know Terramata Beach de- definitely has residents. Yeah. yeah. One guy anyway, I don't know if yeah. you've been down and seen him. Yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't seen the guy at Turry. I've heard about him though. Yeah, he's yeah. a bit of a cranky guy. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. I just hope I never end up doing that as yeah, a, a yeah, lifestyle. I think we're, I think we're pretty safe. Eh? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. What has uh, photography taught you about the world? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's taught me anything more than what it's done is opened my eyes to the world you know how it is like you see things you see the world um in a different way yep. things that you would never have seen before yeah it just generally opens your eyes you, you it's just incredible what you see now that mm. um yeah that you'd never have noticed before for instance like i was saying i was living in los angeles and that was fantastic but i don't remember the, the landscape i know the landscape i remember the buildings and everything but I never looked at the landscape. I never saw it. I never, yeah. I would love to go there again and shoot it. And one of these days I will, because I know there's some interesting buildings there. But yeah, it's, you just, I'm seeing compositions everywhere I go. And I guess the frustrating things too, is you see compositions and I know in my mind how it could work, simple things, but I don't quite know how to get there in Photoshop just yet. Mm. I think that you need to be able to edit certain things in a certain way. And I'd, a lot of the times I see the potential, but I know I don't have the skills to get there just yet. For some yeah, yeah. In terms of Photoshop and editing and whatever, you mentioned you, you can spend hours on, a, on an image. Yeah. What does a typical fine art architecture shot take? It depends on how complex it is. When I say complex, how many the geometric kind of angles and stuff there are in play. It depends if there's trees and stuff to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um. But I could spend three days just doing the selections easily. And I'm talking quite a few hours. Yeah. yeah. And that's an interesting thing too, because I'm not a very patient person. Okay. But it's a funny thing with when it comes to, and this is probably where this is um, very good photography, being great for me, with the, I find it quite relaxing to edit photos. I, I just really enjoy taking photos, sorry, editing photos that I'm more even taking photos. Sounds probably weird to a lot of people but I get a lot more out of that editing process hey what's better than watching a beautiful sunrise right not much Mm. but editing is great so typically I could in a very complex one I could spend easily three days just doing the selections and then probably another day and a half editing it Yeah, Um, right. often what I'll do is I'll make varying different I'll make different versions Mm -hmm. which I've found is a good idea because Often you'll go a long way into it and then realize you've made a mistake. Yeah. That's when you can spend a lot of time fixing it. And sometimes you just can't fix it. It's yeah, right. something critical. And then you just go back to the previous version and, and start again. Yeah. So, yeah, I quite a, can spend quite a bit of time. Maybe I could knock one out in, in a day and a half or something mm, like that. Okay. Depends. Yeah. Are you straight into editing when you've got your shots or do you leave them for a bit and come back to them later? Yeah, I'm, my sort of flow is to come home, get them on the computer straight away. I'm excited. So yep. I'll go through and I'll rate them. And and then I'll pretty much, if I'm feeling, if it's just a general landscape, like a seascape, yep. I can pretty much jump into it. Yep. If it's 
something like a fine art architecture thing where I know it's going to be a lot of work. I might not necessarily jump into it straight away because yeah. I know the work involved. And if I'm a little bit tired, it's it then it becomes right tedious. I've got to be nice, feeling fresh to get into it because I know I'm on a long journey once I start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is what are some of the things that I guess somebody getting into that fine art architecture space would need to think about in terms of the, the skills they need in Photoshop? Yeah, I would definitely advise anybody that wants to do it is to get their Photoshop skills up right off the bat. Do a course. I would highly recommend somebody do a course, even a one-on-one. -on -one. I would recommend probably doing a one-on-one -on -one course with somebody to turbocharge your learning. I think that's yep. one, one you can't beat it. Beat it. I mean, I know everything's available online, but to sit down with somebody and work through it, I think is a very good idea. Yeah, you can't ask a YouTube video questions. Yeah, and here's the thing too. I did a, I did earlier in the year, I did a workshop to the UAE and a couple of people, they were didn't really have the photography, the, the Photoshop skills. And I discovered that, wow, this is, makes it very hard to show people when you've got to start showing them the basic stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it, it's going forward. I have to think about how I approach that with any sort of workshops going forward because yeah. Yeah. it's a certain skill level you need. Yeah. yeah. Are there any specifics you'd highlight? Obviously, understanding layers is, is yeah. critical. Yeah, essentially understanding layers and knowing how to use most of the tools, knowing what the curves are and yep. the tools adjustment. They're, they're pretty basic stuff, levels and curves, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's not something you can just learn straight away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I have to emphasize to people if they want to learn this sort of thing, you're not going to learn it straight off the bat. I certainly haven't. I've learned a tremendous amount after doing learning the, the, from the very first begin bit of gettings. And you have a lot of challenges doing these things and you've got to find ways around it. And, and that's just all the, the tools that you you have in your knowledge bank to, to work on those things. Yeah, right. Do you print much of your work? You mentioned the influence that seeing fine art stuff printed on really good paper and whatever. Do you do much of it yourself now? I don't have a printer. I've avoided getting a printer because it just seems to me like it's another whole level of another black art. Like, to learn. Yeah, yeah, like it's the whole calibration, the the profiles. Then you've it's the it's the sharpening for print. It's the it's the the whole thing. It's mm -hmm. uh, the different papers. But I have a couple of years ago, somebody said to me, "Look, I've just got a new printer, and I'd love to print some of your photos." And it was like one of these big printers, big printer. And I prepared some photos about four of them, and she printed them for me. And they came out really well. And I had them framed and I've got them on my wall at home and they look absolutely amazing. And I, I was actually surprised because, yeah, until you see it printed, it's that thing. It's not a photo to it's printed. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah. So seeing them, yeah, that was quite satisfying for me to see the quality of the work on the wall because yeah. I, it looks to me, that it's quality. It looks great. The, the detail that you you get out of a good print, it's phenomenal. So, one of these days, I'll get some, do some more printing. But I would emphasise to anybody that wants to get things printed, go big. If there's something, and if you can afford it, and you think it's going to be any kind of statement piece, just print it large. Yeah. Um, because it it definitely has more impact. Um, yeah. I, I always tell people to print it as large as you can afford. I'd say that's good advice. Yeah. Um, what was interesting for me early the year, I went to a went to this photography festival in Sharjah, and it's a, it's a huge thing. And they they print, they'll, they'll invite photographers and they'll print their work and they print mm -hmm. it large. And walking around that is fantastic. I highly recommend. And like one of the things, one of the displays, one of the was just like macro flowers was yep. one the one of the exhibitions. And I thought, wow, just a macro flower printed large looks amazing. Yeah. On your screen, a macro flower, whatever, it's a macro flower. But when it's printed large, it's something. It, it can really, be stunning. Yeah. Makes yeah. a real statement. Yeah. 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 
What do you do when you come up against challenges and creative blocks in your photography? Have you ever hit the wall and gone, ah, it's all too hard? I think that probably affects a lot of people. Yes, I sometimes I'll, I might feel like that. I know it's only going to be a fleeting thing. And what I like to do and I advise other people to do is you love your photography, well, go and do some other sort of photography. So I like to go and do mix things up and do a bit of street photography. Yep. Um, to me, street photography is very good for street photography. It's probably hard, but generally speaking, I'll grab, it's nothing better to me than to grab a small camera. If the small camera is great, walk around, just snap away, shoot what's interesting. And mm. it doesn't require much editing. But to me, a curves adjustment, bang, you're done. So yeah. it's easy, it's fun, and it's something different. It just so mix your photography up. Yeah, and, the, and eventually you'll come back to, you'll come back to whatever your whatever your passion is and and it'll be there again yeah yeah what do you see as being the biggest challenge facing photographers now let me see the biggest challenge oh i don't know if it's any changed for people at all you know when they talk about ai and all that i don't know i i think the challenge is just to keep enjoying what you're doing it's to me it's it's if, if it's your passion and you want to and, and that's what you want to do just do it and just um, keep your expectations in check. Like a lot of people, I think, want to become a professional and they want to do it for a living. We can't all do that. We're not all going to be able to get there. So just enjoy what you're doing. And if it's a big decision to go down that path, yeah, just enjoy. I don't see it being too much of a challenge. Okay. To me, for you know, with the AI thing, I think if you wanted to sell art, I see AI as being as a, it's a definite problem going forward because the punter in the street really doesn't know the difference between a fine art print and a and a something that's generated by AI. AI. Yeah, but you do it for yourself. You just yeah. Where do you see the future of photography going? It's all about technology, isn't it really? Yeah. They keep bringing in new technology into Photoshop and so it's how we use we use all those tools that are that keep getting thrown at us. Yeah, I, I don't really know. Okay. What's the what's your favorite thing about being a photographer? To me, it's about the people you meet. It's about the friendships. And it's also just getting out there and doing it. it. Just it's a good reason to get out. It's a great thing. But it's a lot to do with the the friendships. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. What about the worst thing? What's the thing you hate the most? I guess it's that putting your hand in your pocket constantly, isn't it? <laughs> the money you can spend is yeah, it's an expensive it's, habit. It's a very expensive habit. Nobody told me that when I started. No, um, no they never but, do. But in, look, in reality, like cameras are getting better and better. And But seriously, you can still take a damn good photo with a, a camera that's five or six years old. Oh, and definitely. It's totally good enough tool. It really, yeah. it's just the latest you've got better, better stuff, but you don't need it. You can still shoot plenty good with old kit. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that and they keep changing. And say camera companies are, are all about sales. If you're not supporting them, they're not, not going to be there in, in the future. Yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of people do get trapped into that. Oh, I've got to have the latest and greatest, regardless yeah. of whether or not they actually really need it. You know? Yeah, I think we like it. Like the old megapixels. You know, yeah, guys. yeah. Yeah, mind you, my camera's about 42 and I'm sure that's all you need. Saying that, I would love to have the latest Fuji medium format style 100 megapixels. Thank you very much. I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. If they can make that in a slightly smaller f form, I'm all over it. But yeah, I think we just like to reward ourselves as well, don't we? Oh, sometimes, yeah, absolutely. You know, we, absolutely. we work hard, so it's our passion. Why not? Why not have the? Why not buy the latest gear if you can afford it? What do you like to do when you're not out shooting or editing? I would. Usually, a typical kind of day for me is I'll come home and watch a little bit of telly and have lunch, and then I'll get into a little bit of photography. And when I know I've been staring at the the monitor long enough, I'll often go for a, usually go for a, a walk for an hour and listen to some music, and occasionally I'll go for a surf. And yeah, that's it for me. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. What about yourself? Me traveling. I've been doing a lot of that recently. Even I. Just got back from Fiji, and I think I got the camera out of the bag three times the whole week I was there. Yeah, because it wasn't it, the trip wasn't about that. No, 
and whilst I was happy to go and do that when I felt like it, it was more about other things. And so I, I, I got into that. Family is a big thing. And I'm just about to set off on the, this Sunday, actually, in the motorhome we just bought. We're heading up to Queensland for a while. We're not sure exactly what. So it's open-ended, is it? Yeah, at the moment. Yeah, oh, that's so fantastic. We're just going to yeah, yeah. free camp as much as we can and pull up every couple of days, probably more than a couple of days, two, three or four days, because it's fairly self-contained. It's got solar and all the rest of that yeah. sort of thing. But It'll only think- be when I need to fill up with water and gas. That uh, Yeah. Yeah, it it sounds just ideal, doesn't it? I know we've hired camper vans, and geez, when you're sitting when you're sitting on the beach or in your camper van, whatever, and you've got looking out this beautiful sand in front of you or whatever, and your next door neighbours provide you over for a beer, and it's a great life, isn't it? You just forget about all the what, whatever's going on in the world. It's just it it just it doesn't matter anymore. You just enjoy it. It's it's fantastic. Exactly, that's the plan. <laughs> great nomad thing. Bring it on, you know. So. Yeah. Definitely. I thought I'd bring it on, so <laughs> we're, yeah. we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, excellent. <clears throat> Pardon me. Who do you think I should be talking to? What other photographers do you think I, I I need to put on the podcast? Yeah, I know you get a lot of people suggested to you, and, and if the, the photographers you've interviewed in Australia, a lot of them will give the same names, and they are very worthy as well. Yeah, I think you did Paul Holland, didn't you? Uh, yeah, done Paul yeah, Holland. Paul, yeah. yeah, he can really talk. Yep. Uh, but I think... There's one, Olga Bullock. Do you know Olga? Oh, Olga. Yeah. I think she'd be, there's just a whole heap of people, but I think Olga would be, I know you don't need a whole heap, but Olga would be a good one. She started off pretty much landscapey, normal landscape, and she's got into using textures and double exposure. And okay. Yeah, she does beautiful work. Yeah, I would highly recommend, look her up. Okay, definitely. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a really nice lady. And yeah, she might have some other stories to tell, um, some information. Yeah. Fair enough. Thanks for that. No worries. I've got one more question, and I think you know what's coming. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you like pineapple on pizza? Yeah, I do. I do like pineapple on pizza. But I have to say, in this day and age, I'm more likely to throw some chili on that as well. Yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd I'm like, with you like there. That. I don't mind I'd, that. My uh, my wife can't stand Billy. She just do- doesn't cope with the the heat. And I could, you, you could cut a pizza on a board that's had chili on it, and she'll know. Yes, yeah. You know, even though you've wiped it off and cleaned it, yeah. she'll know. But so I have a a little jar of chili flakes that I sprinkle on my pizza. Yeah, on your half, I, I sort of yeah. tend to do the same thing myself. <laughs> and it's one of those things. Once you get into it, you develop a taste, don't you? And then oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to have it on everything <laughs> all right thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today graham it's been wonderful getting to know you a little bit better and uh getting to put a, a face to the name where can people find your work i do have a website but i have to say i haven't maintained it for a fair while for different reasons but i reckon just look on Flickr, and i've posted on Flickr more recently and instagram Probably a couple of good places to go. You can look up Graham Gordon Photography. I'm there, but I've got to do something. It's not anywhere near up to date. So, Fair uh, enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks very much, Matt. Lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers. See you then. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon.